Namaste, y o u m u t h Today, I've greeted you in Nepali. It's a language used in Nepal. Let us begin our worship with prayer. Jun Lee, grade 12 teacher, will pray for the service. Let us pray for the worship. Father God, I just want to thank you for giving us together this time once again, Lord, to come together on a Sunday to hear your word, to reminisce on your word, and to learn from you, Lord.、Um, I just pray that as we're serving and listening to you and coming before you during these difficult times, I just pray that you would be with us. Would you use Pastor John to invoke words within us, Lord, just to seek you, just to follow you, Lord. I just thank you for being who you are, Lord. In Jesus Christ's most precious name, I pray. Amen. Praise will 
given to us today is James 1 verse 19 to 25 James 1 verse 19 to 25 let's open up our Bible and read the scripture together my dear brothers take note of this everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry for man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this 
not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Amen. The word of God given to us today is entitled, How to Listen. How to Listen. In life, there are things we ought to do and we should not do. When we follow along the rules, things get a little easier. When we do not follow the rules, things get a little bad, sometimes even out of hand. I had a dangerous hobby when I was in high school, and it was to drive taxis. I did not have a driver's license. I did not have a license to drive taxis. But what I did was I rented taxis for an hour. In Cameroon, renting a taxi for an hour was two to three dollars. And then usually the people would drive around for an hour and rent. When you rent a taxi for an hour, you can go wherever you want for an hour. But then I will make a deal with the taxi driver. Hey, you have to do nothing. Just sit beside me and let me drive. And I will go to remote places and we will not get caught. So you can just rest and I'll do the driving and then I'll rent a taxi for an hour. And some people would say no because it's too dangerous. Some people would say yes because they could just rest and earn some money. This one afternoon after class, I rented a taxi with one of my friends. And we went to a remote place near the airport. And I was driving. But you know, in many countries, taxis are easily distinguishable. They have a certain color, right? And in Cameroon, the color was yellow. I was driving a yellow taxi. And then from far away, policeman saw me. And he gave signals to stop because he saw a young Asian driving a taxi. And that's not something that is usual. What was I supposed to do? Do you think I would have stopped? Because if I stopped, then the policeman would have verified my driver's license. And I did not have one. He would have verified if I have the license to drive a taxi. But I did not have one. So it meant a lot of trouble. So this policeman was giving me signals to stop. But I just ran by him. I just didn't stop and just went on. Because I saw that he did not have a car nor a motorcycle. But then this policeman got really mad and he rented another taxi and chased after us. And I had fallen into a big, big trouble. There are things in this world we ought to do and not to do. When we follow the rules, life gets a little easier. When we break the rules, sometimes situations could get out of hand, just as what happened to me. Today, in the passage today, it tells us about how believers should live, things that the believers should do and things that the believers should not do. Let us read together verse 19. Verse 19. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. What does the passage tell us to not do? What are things that we believers should not do? It says, we should not easily speak. We should not easily get angry. What does it mean to be slow in speaking? Does it literally mean to say something slowly? No, probably not. It means for us to consider and think before we have to say something. We shouldn't easily speak, but slow to speak. So before saying something to someone, I think about it, consider about it. And then, if I truly think that it's something worth it to speak, I say it to that person. Because there are many times we say things, but then we soon get to regret. Why did I say it? It's because we easily speak. We speak fast. 
Another thing we ought not to do is to get easily angry. The passage today tells us to be slow in becoming angry. When we get angry, emotions are triggered, and sometimes it takes over our rationality, and then we're like, "Bam!" We get mad. But it tells us to be slow in becoming angry. To think, why am I feeling this anger? Why am I getting emotional? What's the reason I'm getting so angry about this situation? Sometimes it could be miscomprehension. Sometimes it could be miscommunication, and later on we get to realize that oh, it was just a misunderstanding, a miscommunication, and we regret on how we were easily mad and we expressed our anger. That is why the Bible today tells us. As believers, should not easily speak. Think about it before we speak, so that we don't live a regretful life. Think about our emotions before we express it, because God doesn't want us to live a regretful life. That what does it tell us that we should be doing? We believers should be quick to listen. We should be quick to listen. God emphasizes on how believers are to listen, to listen to the word of God. When we read Deuteronomy, it's the last sermon of Moses to the Israelites. He's giving his last speech, last sermon to the Israelites, and this is what he says: "This is the command that God gave me, Israel. This is what I was taught to teach you, and this is the first command." Shema Israel, listen Israel, or、oh, hear Israel. It's not a choice of us to listen to God. It's a command. Listening is really important to the believers. We might be saying, "Okay, Pastor John, we're listening to your sermon. We listen to many preachers. We read the Bible, so we do listen. Yes, we do listen. But sometimes, what's more important?" Than just listening is on how we listen. Sometimes we may be saying the same thing, the same content, but how we say it gives a different response. Sometimes we may be saying the same thing, but our tone and our attitude on how we say it could make the difference. Sometimes how we say it better conveys the message. Recently, I read a sermon. From this pastor, who was preaching about homosexuality, and this pastor was well known for for preaching to the non-believers. And this pastor, reading the his sermon, was preaching the same content that any other pastor would preach: that homosexuality is a sin before God. But the way on how he spoke it was different. He first started. By giving an apology to the congreg congregation, to the audience, who had a significant number of gays and lesbians, he said he was really sorry, as someone who represents Christianity, for having shown a hostile stance to the gays and lesbians. He said he was sorry because Christians segregated homosexuals between them. And us, he started with the apology, and he mentioned on this experience he had when he was a college student. There was one of his friend who was gay, and they were having this discussion. And this friend invited him over to his apartment, so that they could keep on discussing. And he said sure, and he went into the apartment. As they were having their discussions, time flew, and the friend who invited him over. Told him that he had to leave for the next class because he had more classes later in the afternoon. But then he mentioned this one thing: "You know what? You are the first Christian who came over to my apartment. Because when I offered invitation to other Christians, they all refused, and this shocked the pastor as he was a college student. And this is what he apologized to the audience." Whom had significant number of 
gays and lesbians were sorry for misbehaving, for being immature. But then he went on to emphasize, but there's one thing you need to know. Just as anyone has desires that are ungodly, homosexuality, it's a sexual orientation that is ungodly. And just as any sinners would have to fight against the desires that are not holy, it is the same desire that is unholy that homosexuals have to fight. And he concluded that he would be willing to support and pray together and fight together, just as he himself is fighting against sin, that they should also join in this battle to fight against sin. Although it was the same content, same message, the way he spoke it, on how he started with the apology, and how he sympathized and understood what they were going through, moved the hearts of the audience who are listening to his message. So, instead of what we say, sometimes what's more important is on how we say it. And it's the same thing with listening. We might be listening to the same content, but on how we listen is sometimes more important. We might be listening to the same sermons, same Word of God, same Bible, but on how we listen is more important. What does the Bible tell us on how we are to listen? Let us read together verse 22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do not merely listen. What does it mean to merely listen? To just listen. To only listen. Don't stop only at listening. Do not just listen. Do not only listen. What happens when you only listen and just listen? You deceive yourself. You think the message you have heard has already become a part of you because you have listened. But the Bible says, when you just listen and stop there, this message you have heard is not a part of you. Then when does it become a part of you? When you do it. How are we to listen? By extending what we have heard, the message. By planting it into our hearts. By planting it into our lives, in our daily lives. And extending it and living it out. And that's the way we should be listening. What happens to those who listen to the Word of God, but they do not put it into action? This is what the passage says. Let us read together verse 23 and 24. Anyone who listens to the Word, but does not do what it says, is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what he looks like. Anyone who listens to the Word of God, the Word of God is like a mirror. When you listen to the Word of God, is you're standing in front of a mirror. And they look at themselves. But when you do not, do it. But when you only listen, it means as if you're looking at the mirror, but you forget about how you look before God, and you just walk out. There's this one time in Korea, I was in the library, and there was this public washroom. And a lady walked out from the washroom. And on the front, she looked perfect. She had a skirt. But when she turned on her back, her skirt was rolled up under her underwear. So we were able to see her underwear from the back. She wasn't able to see because the front of the mirror, she looked fine. But it was on the back on how the skirt rolled up to her underwear. And I was about to go and tell her, but she just walked out the building. And I couldn't tell her. She looked quite hilarious. She would have walked like that in front of quite a number of people. But then, that is the same thing that happens to us. When we stand in front of the mirror by listening to the Word of God, and we have dots here and there, we have chocolate here and there, and we look at ourselves, but we don't pay clear attention. We don't clean our faces, wash our faces, and we just walk out. And we walk in this world saying that we're Christians. But before God, we're walking in a hilarious way. We have so many things on our faces. There are times our daughter gets ready in the morning to go to school. And she washes her, washes her faces. 
brushes her teeth and she comes out. She's ready to go to school. And we're like, did you really look at the mirror? Because she has Nutella on her face. And we're like, go back again. Pay attention. Look closely at the mirror. Look at your face. Wash your face. When we listen to the word of God, we're standing in front of the mirror that reflects us before God on how God will be looking at us. There are things that we feel listening to the word of God. There are mistakes that are revealed, our mistakes that are revealed before God. Sometimes we don't like listening to sermons because it makes us feel bad. It tells us that we're living in a way that is wrong before God. But God is telling us, do not stop there. Do not just merely listen. But what you ought to do is, and how you listen to it, is to by extending it into your life, into your actions, do it. Then God will look gracefully at you and He will bless you. I pray that you and I, that we may reflect ourselves upon the mirror of God every Sunday, through every sermons, every day by reading the Bible of God and that we may correct ourselves. Just as we stand in front of the mirror every morning before we go to school, let us reflect ourselves before the mirror of God and not just stop there. Do it. Leave the word of God by correcting our lives before God. Let us pray. In this moment, I would like us to pray with these two prayer requests. Let us reflect ourselves before the mirror by listening to your word. Let us extend what we have listened into our lives and into our actions. Let us pray. Just as we reflect ourselves before the mirror, before we go out into our daily lives. Today in this day of yours, we have stood in front of your mirror by listening to your word. Let's just not just stop there, but let us continue by reflecting ourselves into the mirror, but also by correcting our wrongdoings before you. Let us not merely listen and just stop there, but let us leave out your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us close the service with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Here are the announcements for this week. Student staff meeting today at 1 p.m. Parents workshop today at 3 p.m. Alpha Youth Program coming in March. Spring Break Retreat coming in March 20th, Saturday to 21st Sunday from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. If you have any questions, DM Pastor John or ask the teachers. Have a blessed week, everyone.